السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم محمد روف لیکچر ڈپارٹمنٹ آف زولوجی کسٹ ویلکم ٹو دا کورس پرنسپلز ان اینیمل لائف ٹو دس از لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی ون دا ٹاپک از جین ریگولیشن ان یو کیریوٹس ڈسکسنگ ایجنڈا فار دا ٹاپک ویل بی انٹروڈکشن Eukaryotic gene expression is regulated at many stages regulation of chromatin structure regulation of transcription initiation mechanism of post transcriptional regulation lecture outcome after watching and listening this lecture students will know about various steps where the product of a gene is regulated introduction gene regulation is the process of turning genes on and off what is mean by turning genes on and off when a messenger RNA or any other type of RNA is being synthesized from a gene we say that the gene is on and when no transcription is going on we say that the gene is off all organisms must regulate which genes are expressed at any given time eukaryotic gene expression is regulated at many stages both prokaryotes and eukaryotes must regulate the expression of their genes organisms continually turn genes on and off in response to signals from their external and internal environments regulation of gene expression is also essential for cell specialization in multicellular organisms now let's summarize this slide gene regulation is an extremely important process for a cell if we take an example of the human cell which has 25000 genes now all the genes in a cell are not turned on at a time the cell receive signals from its internal environment uh, and external environment uh, and in response to those signals the cell either turn on genes or turn them off uh, the cell has limited resources and it cannot afford to produce something which it does not require uh, because by doing so it will waste its resources which could be used somewhere else where they are vitally needed so it's uh, an important process and this process is of utmost importance when the cells starts entering different pathways of specialization a zygote is divided into uh, several descendant cells uh, then there are three germinal layers formed uh, then after that the three germinal layers give rise to other types of cells uh, so why these specialization occurs uh, why the cells are different from each other in an individual despite the fact that all the cells have the same genome so the answer is gene regulation or differential gene expression 
where different genes are expressed in different cells. Now coming on to differential gene expression, a human cell might express about 20% of its protein coding genes at any given time. So there are a total of 19,000 and 1900 protein encoding genes in the humans. The other genes encode different types of RNAs. So only 20% of those 19,000 genes are turned on in a particular cell at a time. And this 20% will encompass those genes uh, which the product of whom is required to that particular cell in under a given set of conditions. Highly differentiated cells such as muscle or nerve cells express an even smaller fraction of their genes. The muscle cells and nerve cells they are specialized cells uh, they are designated to perform a specific function and uh, their structure is also suitable to the function they perform and here both muscle and nerve cells in an individual has the same genome but because of the fact that different genes are on in those two cells therefore they have characteristic structure and function almost all the cells in a multicellular organism contain an identical genome that's very much true housekeeping genes expressed by many cell types now these are the genes which are turned on always in almost all types of cells because the product of those genes is vital for the survival of the organ uh, cell just like the human beings uh, and other animals require oxygen all of them require oxygen but apart from uh, oxygen the feeding habits of animals varies from each other so you can apply this analogy here that a certain set of genes will always be on in particular cell types uh, and those genes are called housekeeping genes uh, which maintains the cell in proper order and meets the energy requirements of the cell uniquely expressed genes uh, allows the cells to carry out their specific functions now the nerve cells are responsible for the transmission of nerve impulses so in nerve cells only those genes will be on which helps them perform their function similarly in the muscle cells another set of genes will be on in the liver cells there will be yet another set of genes on so in specialized cells those genes will be on which give that specialized cell its characteristic shape and function the difference between cell types therefore are not due to different genes being present but to differential gene expression now the a fully developed human has 200 different types of cells uh, and all those cells have the same genome the same set of genes uh, so there is no difference in the 
gene complement of those 200 different types of cells but the difference is in their expression different genes are expressed in different cells so differential gene expression is the expression of different genes by cells with the same genome when gene expression proceeds abnormally serious imbalances and diseases including cancer can arises cancer is the abnormal growth of uh, cells uh, so when there is a lack of coordination then such problems arises now stages in gene expression that can be regulated there are several instances in a eukaryotic organism in a eukaryotic cell where the product of a gene can be regulated this uh, chart explains the different stages where the product of a gene can be regulated first is chromatin chromatin is made up of dna and associated proteins uh, the dna is coiled around histone proteins uh, and this provides the first uh, level of regulation when the dna is wound around histones uh, when it is in that form in that condensed form the transcriptional machinery cannot access a gene which is in that form which is wound around a histone so the dna must be unpackaged from proteins uh, and only then the transcriptional machinery can access it the second is the transcription itself uh, transcription is the process in which functional copies of rna are produced uh, so whether transcription will take place or not uh, at which rate the process of transcription will take place uh, so here provides another level of regulation we will discuss each of them in detail in the subsequent slides uh, another level of gene regulation is post transcriptional processing where exons are joined uh, exons are rearranged uh, through alternative splicing and introns are removed through splicing so this provides yet another level at which type of protein or which type of messenger rna will be formed now there is uh, another level after transcription in eukaryotes the processed messenger rna finds its way to the cytoplasm via nuclear pores so whether this messenger rna will will reach the cytoplasm or its way will be blocked and it will stay in the nucleus it's another level yet another level of trans uh, regu gene regulation is translation whether the process of translation will take place or not the messenger rna can be degraded before the start of translation and another level of gene regulation is protein processing when the polypeptide is formed uh, the polypeptide is modified in different ways depending upon the need of the cell different functional groups can be attached to it uh, it can be uh, coiled in different ways different three-dimensional structures can be produced uh, so it also depends upon the need of the cell 
that which type of protein is required uh, and uh, once the protein is uh, produced uh, finally furnished uh, and the protein perform its function then how this protein will be degraded because if the protein stays in the cell then it will perform its function but what if the function of a particular protein is not needed then this protein must be degraded into its individual subunits and those subunits must be incorporated somewhere else into another protein so that it provides another level of gene regulation we will discuss uh, those in details in the subsequent slides so the first is a regulation of chromatin structure dna of eukaryotic cells is packed with proteins in an elaborate complex known as chromatin chromatin is the combination of dna and associated proteins uh, and associated proteins can be of two types histones and non-histones so the dna is directly associated with the histone octamer it coils around the histone octamer and forms a structure called nucleosome The structural organization of chromatin not only packs a cell's DNA into a compact form that fits inside the nucleus, but also helps regulate gene expression in several ways. So you already know that the length of So regulation of chromatin structure, you know that DNA is associated with uh, histones. Uh, DNA is wound around the histone octamer and it forms a structure called nucleosome. Now the arrangement of DNA with histones uh, is important because it not only accommodates DNA inside the nucleus but it also helps in regulation of gene expression you already know that the length of DNA is 10,000 times greater than the diameter of the nucleus so there must be lot of packaging involved in order to accommodate such a humongous molecule inside such a short uh, area and it is ensured by the association of DNA with histones genes within chromatin now once the DNA is associated with histones uh, and there is tight coiling and uh, packaging then such a chromatin is called heterochromatin heterochromatin is not accessible to the transcriptional machinery and it's a highly condensed area darkly stained area so this the genes which resides in that particular area cannot be transcribed and uh, because the histones themselves are made up of polypeptides uh, and the polypeptides has uh, its two ends uh, one end is uh, n-terminus the other is c-terminus uh, so at times chemical modifications occur on the histone tails uh, and this helps in the chromatin remodeling in the uh, conversion of heterochromatin to euchromatin or vice versa now what type of modification occurs on the histone tails uh, there are two types of modifications one is DNA methylation The end terminus of each histone protein in a nucleosome protrude outwards from the nucleosome. 
and this histone tail is available for the action of modifying enzymes uh, so two types of uh, processes occurs one is histone acetylation where acetyl groups are attached to the histone tails uh, and courtesy of this modification the association between the dna and the histones is loosened and the dna is released uh, and it is available for the transcriptional machinery so histone acetylation brings heterochromatin to euchromatin there is another type of modification which is his de histone methylation this is exactly opposite to histone acetylation here methyl groups are attached to the histone tails uh, and the association between the dna and the histones is strengthened uh, and the dna converts from euchromatin to he heterochromatin and the gene is turned off here in this uh, diagram you can see this uh, is a histone octamer and it is surrounded by a dna molecule these are the histone tails the histones themselves are proteins made up of amino acids so these are the histone tails uh, or C terminus and N terminus and these chemical reactions these chemical modifications occurs here on the histone tails uh, and depending upon the modifying enzymes uh, if it is histone acetyl transferase then acetylation will occur and if the modifying enzyme is histone deacetylase then methylation will occur now here you should differentiate one thing histone methylation is different from dna methylation in dna methylation methyl groups are added to the cysteine residues in dna whereas in histone methylation methyl groups are attached to the histone tails uh, this histone methylation occurs during dna methylation occurs during x chromosome inactivation where methyl groups are added to the cytosine cytosine base here methyl groups are added to the histone tails uh, and in DNA methylation methyl groups are added to the methyl groups are added to the cytosine uh, bases in DNA methylation so both these processes turns the gene off now we have discussed the first level where the product of a gene is regulated now it's the second level which is regulation of transcription initiation transcription initiation is a process in which the rna polymerase along with general transcription factors attached to the promoter site when this assembly is ensured this process is called initiation and the complex is known as pre-initiation complex so this is another level to either prevent the gene from 
carrying out the process of expression or to enhance the level of transcription. So chromatin modifying enzymes provide initial control of gene expression by making a region of DNA either more or less able to bind the transcription machinery. The regulation of transcription initiation in eukaryotes involves protein that bind to DNA and either facilitate or inhibit binding of RNA polymerases. The process is more complicated in eukaryotes. Before looking at how eukaryotic cells control their transcription, let's review the structure of a eukaryotic gene. Now this is a eukaryotic gene. This is the promoter site where the pre-initiation complex is established uh, RNA polymerase and other transcription factors come and they settle down here they identify the promoter region and thereafter the assembly moves in downstream direction and the process of transcription starts uh, this is a eukaryotic gene so the exons are separated from each other by non-coding sequences which are called introns uh, and then there are proximal control elements uh, which helps uh, in the process of transcription and uh, the regulation of the gene proximal control elements are located closer to uh, a gene and in upstream direction where is distal control elements uh, they are called enhancers and they may be present thousands of bases upstream or downstream of a gene and uh, there may be several uh, uh, types of distal control elements Then there is the poly A uh, sequence uh, and uh, once it is copied to messenger RNA that show, then shortly a region arrives which results in the termination of transcription. So after transcription the introns are removed through splicing and uh, a poly A tail is attached to the 3 dish and uh, UTR regions are attached, uh, in fact they are copied uh, and these UTR regions are not translated. You can see here untranslated regions, uh, they are not translated. This is the actual coding area which will form the protein, uh, but these are important and helps in longevity of RNA's life uh, and in the settling of messenger RNA on ribosome at correct uh, orientation. So these sequences are important. Cluster of proteins called a transcription initiation complex assembles on the promoter sequence at the upstream end of the gene. Here the transcription initiation complex will be established uh, and then RNA polymerase starts transcription and synthesizes a primary RNA transcript. Now here we have discussed the structure of the gene. Uh, now what type of processing takes place? 
there is an enzymatic addition of five dish cap and polyethyl and the second type of modification is the removal of introns because they are non-coding and the joining of exons the removal of introns is known as splicing and the rearrangement of exons is known as alternative splicing so if someone asks you a question that there are 19,900 protein encoding genes in the human genome but there are suppose 100,000 different types of proteins produced uh, so how it is possible the answer is alternative splicing where the rearrangement of exons takes place uh, and the RNA transcript from a single gene can be rearranged uh, in different ways and give rise to different proteins. Uh, second is the post translational modification where the RNA where the protein is modified in different ways and each way give rise to a different type of proteins. Now, associated with most eukaryotic genes are control elements. So these are the proximal control elements which are located near to the gene. These are the distal control elements which are located far away. They can be upstream, they can be downstream, they can be thousands of bases away from the gene they control but usually they are gene specific and only uh, affect that particular gene. So control elements are segments of non-coding DNA that serve as binding sites for the proteins called transcription factors which bind to the control elements and regulate transcription. Now there are two types of transcriptional factors. Uh, one is general transcription factors which are required by all types of genes uh, and the other just like the name signify are specific transcription factors uh, which are specific for any particular gene. Uh, to initiate transcription, eukaryotic RNA polymerase requires the assistance of transcription factors. Uh, some transcription factors are essential for the transcription of all protein encoding genes. These are called uh, general transcription factors or GTFs uh, and they uh, attach to the promoter site whereas other transcription factors which are called specific transcription factors they attach to a specific site in the promoter region which is a Tata box. Uh, Tata box is named so because thiamine and adenine bases are present there. The interaction of general transcription factors and RNA pole 2 with promoter usually leads to a low rate of initiation and production of few RNA transcripts from the gene. So the presence of RNA polymerase and general transcription factors at the promoter site is not enough for the optimum uh, functioning and optimum rate of transcription. It needs the attachment of yet another type of factors for maximum rate of transcription and these factors are called specific transcription factors. Uh, so in eukaryotes the rate of transcription or the rates of gene expression can be strongly increased or decreased by binding of specific transcription factors. Now specific transcription factors can either be activators or repressors. 
these are pretty much self-explanatory activators when bound to control elements increases the rate of transcription above the basal level and they decreases the rate of transcription repressors hundreds of transcription activators have been discovered in eukaryotes uh, now enhancers and specific transcription factors uh, the proximal control elements are located closer to the promoter whereas distal control elements are located thousands of nucleotides upstream or downstream or even within an intron means the distal control elements can be look proximal <coughs> distal control elements can be located with within an intron of the gene they control so a given gene may have multiple enhancers each active at a different time or in a different cell type or location in the organism but each enhancer is generally associated with only that gene and no other here once again an overview of a eukaryotic gene and the product it forms and the how the product is modified so now we study the effect of the specific transcription factors uh, how they increases the rate of transcription and how they decreases the rate of transcription so as already mentioned the specific transcription factors can either be activators or repressors uh, here they have shown an activator so activator binds to enhancer region and uh, bending of the dna occurs by a protein uh, and once the dna is bent uh, this enhancer comes closer to the transcription initiation site uh, and uh, once this association is established uh, then this increases the rate of transcription and hundreds of thousands of RNAs are produced in a short span of time so just recall it once again how activators increases the rate of transcription activators binds to enhancers remember enhancers are located in distal control elements when enhancers are bound by activators the DNA bending enzymes bends the dna so that this enhancer region comes closer to the initiation complex uh, and then once it happens then the process of transcription increases significantly same is the case with the repressors uh, if a cell needs to decrease the speed of transcription then repressors bind here instead of activators the repressors can either interact with activators and minimize their effect or the repressors can directly act on the DNA and perform their function which is to decrease the rate of transcription mechanism of post transcriptional modification so after transcription the processing of RNA takes place uh, and uh, this processing is of two types first is the addition of the cape and polyatel and second is the rearrange the removal of introns non-coding regions and the rearrangement of exons this is important rearrangement of exons uh, a single messenger rna 
can be rearranged in different ways and then each modified messenger RNA will give rise to a different type of protein. So this is a very much vital process that is responsible for the protein diversity that exists in living organisms. Now you can see here they have given an example. So for instance, researchers have found a drosophila gene with enough alternative spliced exons to generate about 19,000 membrane proteins. So this is just a single gene in drosophila. The rearrangement of exons takes place and there can be 19,000 different membrane proteins produced by a single gene courtesy of alternative splicing where the rearrangement of exons takes place. So the primary transcript uh, of this gene, which is a troponin gene, can be spliced in more than one way, generating different mRNA molecules. Now see here, one mRNA molecule has ended up with exon 3 and the other with exon 4. These mRNAs are translated into different but related muscle proteins. So this is alternative splicing where the rearrangement of exons takes place. And this is the example of a troponin gene. This is the end of part a of this lecture kindly refer to part b for the remaining part of this topic thank you very much allah hafiz